im Pipi. Sehr geehrte Frau Vorsitzende, sehr geehrter Herr Hoher. Thank you very much. Thank you to Vice President and the High Representative. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be aware of how destructive nuclear weapons are. We must make sure that we don't forget about this like all other nuclear weapons have done. We have to remember that we talked about deterrence in the past. We said the fact that, that deterrence, mutual deterrence, meant security. That, to a certain extent, may be true, but it's much better to have disarmament in terms of nuclear weapons. I'm very glad that we have the treaty, but I'm not glad that only Ireland, Malta, and Austria have ratified this. Can I remind you that there's also a major danger because non-state players could actually get these nuclear weapons and you could have disastrous consequences if there were t acts of terror committed with nuclear weapons. I think it's right that the U.S. and Russia are negotiating a follow-up to the START treaty and I think it's good that they're doing this in Vienna. I think it's a shame that China is not getting involved at all. China is quite simply not getting involved in these negotiations. But we should not give up. We want to reduce the number of warheads and we need to think in the future of a world without nuclear weapons. Thank you very much. First, indeed, our colleague Shida. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. High Representative, 15,000 atomic bombs, that's what we have worldwide, and one single atomic bomb today has much bigger explosive power than those that were used in Nagasaki. With everything that exists today, it would be possible to destroy the world 150 times over. In Russia in 2019, invested 10 billion. Rush, the U.S. invested billions, and France invested 5 billion last year as well for their nuclear arsenal. What I want is a nuclear weapon-free world, ladies and gentlemen, and for that we need a strong international control system. The treaty prohibiting nuclear weapons is very important. The USA and Russia must pursue dialogue on disarmament and must restore it as soon as possible together with China. The aim of having a nuclear weapon-free world means that we have to have a Europe free of nuclear weapons where none are possessed, but where none may be stationed either, belonging to other powers. And that also means a Middle East with no nuclear weapons. I'm very concerned about that. Furthermore, we need more efforts for ratification of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons as pushed by my country. We need to put more energy into that. Einstein once said that human beings invented nuclear weapons, but no mouse of the world would build a mouse trap. Let's work towards a nuclear weapon free world. Thank you very much for renew our colleague Ostrovichus three minutes. Yeah. Hi representative colleagues. This year we celebrate the fiftieth anniversary of the Treaty of Non Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. This treaty is a great success. Of the 191 states that have signed up, only nine have nuclear weapons. This is a much smaller number than anyone could have predicted when the treaty entered into the force 50 years ago. Our biggest challenge now is to make North Korea and Iran adhere to the treaty. If not, why wouldn't any of the other signatory states do? Saudi Arabia already declared it will develop nuclear arms if Iran has access to a nuclear bomb. And Turkey, 
might very well follow suit. In this environment, we should not blame Israel for having nuclear weapons. They are essential for its survival. The EU must continue its efforts to stop Iran from developing nuclear weapons, preferably via the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. But if Iran is not willing to honor its engagement, we will have to find other means. North Korea will not be pursued by the West alone. For that, we need the Chinese on board. I am afraid that as long as China does not see a North Korean nuclear weapon as a problem, it will be difficult to make any substantial progress. To conclude, Madam Chair, the European Union must continue to promote NPT and that its member, members honour their commitments. We must pursue this in close cooperation with other democracies because a rule-based world order is our best chance of ensuring peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. You can't have purely European diplomacy. Nuclear power demonstrates that. In, uh, since Brexit, it's France that's been in charge of the nuclear deterrent. There is no such thing as European sovereignty. We are defenders of a Europe of uh, nations, and we think that only a nation-state with the inalienable right to defend itself can possess such supreme force. It guarantees stability, the necessary stability for uh, our sovereign nation, France. I want to warn uh, this House, the uh, treaty being uh, mooted is not going to serve peace, and nor can atomic power ever be uninvented. There are three threats to the European continent, Turkey, Islamist terrorism, uh, and uh, the armament of space. Thank you. Next speaker is Satori for the Greens. One and a half minutes. Thank you very much, High Representative. The EU and its member states, including France, my country, can have an important role to play in nuclear disarmament. This uh, power of initiative is lacking when the non-proliferation treaties are uh, not going well one after the other and there is more and more risk. The recommendations that we're giving to the Council and the High Representative of the Union are of major importance. We can just wait in the sidelines and see how the noxious policies of uh, nuclear arsenal countries wreak havoc, or for our own collective security, we can take a historic initiative and move forward with dis disarmament. The NPT in the 1960s already said it was an obligation to negotiate disarmament, and the European Parliament has to give its clear backing uh, to uh, this treaty. Now, the Treaty of 2017 was about nuclear deterrence, but it seems that it will be very difficult. Uh, a lot of people said that it wouldn't enter into force, and yet it will soon um, do so. Uh, Austria, among other countries, has ratified it, and others will join. Some people have talked about realistic disarmament. The only realism that I want is the one that protects citizens and promotes the attainable goal of a free world without nuclear threats. I would like to urge you to support the intergroup amendments that I've tabled on behalf of the Greens in order to make sure that the report will rise to the occasion. Thank you. 
Dankeschön. Nächste Rednerin ist die Kollegin de Merel. Eine Minute für die... Thank you, Mrs. De Merel. One minute greens. Vor 75 Jahren wurde... 75 years ago, US nuclear bombs landed on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The destruction could be felt decades later by man and nature. And the NPT was a major step forward in halting this progress of nuclear proliferation. But it's not still not the case uh, that people have understood all the lessons and talk about a nuclear deterrent as a guarantor of security. Right now, German military are training together with Dutch, Belgian and other forces, uh, training, carrying out training exercises uh, involving nuclear arms and nuclear bombs. And they're talking about expanding nuclear arsenals. Do we really want this? No, of course not. We want Europe to become a nuclear weapon-free zone. Worldwide, we want the world to become nuclear-free, whether it's French, British, or Russian nuclear arms. Those warheads need to be neutralized once and for all so that we can put an end to the extinguishing of lives. We need everyone to come on board. Every single EU member state should sign this. Thank you, Mrs. Demiller. And next, Vice President Castaldo, one and a half minutes. Thank you, President. Uh, high Representative, the deterioration of the relations between nuclear armed states and the modernization of arsenals and launch systems, the collapse of the NPT Treaty and the fact that the U.S. have left the Iranian uh, agreement and the open skies uh, treatment, the dangerous state of the nuclear weapons arsenal are all a dangerous signal of a situation the world cannot afford. And that's why postponing the 10th MPT conference must be seen as an opportunity for us as Europeans to restate categorically once again the centrality and uh, necessity of the NPT and to be more ambitious because the alternative is just terrifying. Let's take this added time to step up dialogue both with those actors who share our same concerns, suggesting new shared initiatives, and with those who are further apart from us on the topics that may complicate or even undermine the success of the conference. It's therefore fundamental that member states should come to the conference with a strong position and a coordinated position at a European level, not least in light of the position we've adopted in this plenary, saying that peace and security internationally are strengthened in a world free of the existence or proliferation of nuclear weapons, and that nuclear disarmament doesn't just mean uh, cutting the threat, but also uh, scaling back the military role given to this kind of weapon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Castaldo. And we are now coming towards the closing of this debate, and I give the floor to the High Representative, Mr. Borrell.